it was almost as if a perfect storm was brewing. There were different things going on in our district simultaneously. So there was a district incentive for many years to implement PLCs at each building and to collaborate with teachers and so there was this PLC professional development that had been ongoing. And then we also did a partnership with Merck, the MISE partnership. And that focus, they worked with teachers in the science department, was basically about building a culture of collaboration. So it was around science instruction, but the culture of collaboration was being built. So that was happening. Um, we also had a distinguished educator here because of PSSA scores. We were in corrective action. And um, so there were all these things going on. And then I think the catalyst that brought that storm to a head was the announcement that keystones were going to take place. And now our students would need to take keystones. So we reacted to that very, in a very serious way. We knew that we had to prepare our students for keystone exams and we needed to focus on student achievement and student instruction. We're gonna talk about error today. And this kind of stemmed from a conversation that me and Nina were having. And we were talking about, well, what does error look like? Well, what's it look like in physics? What does it look like in chemistry? What does it look like in biology? How is it different? So we figured we'd start off with an activity. And I'm going to have you guys do something that I do in my classroom. And it's really one of the main sources of error that I talk about. And the activity that we're going to do today is something that both Diane and Chris complete and then I also do in my classroom. And I'm going to split you guys into pairs randomly. So this is something that I'll do every once in a while. I'm going to have you guys line up from the tallest person to the shortest person. So on Inquiry Tuesdays, we'll come to a teacher's room to where they've put out a specific subject, uh, and we'll go. Ahead, we'll come into the room, and it could be you know something that they've just done in their classroom or um, a topic that they feel would be relevant for all of us. And of it's really cool how we come in and we get to do something, do uh, see how that teacher kind of teaches that topic, and then kind of sit down and have a discussion about it and reflect upon you know, what was exactly being presented there and uh, kind of how we can then teach things maybe a little bit better and, and then bring that back into our classroom. And if, I, if you look on the board, it's basically how this is going to work. Well, today was a, a best practice sharing um, that we do. Uh, once a month we gather as a department and one teacher will simply present to the whole group uh, some activity that he or she does in his classroom. and, and you know, oftentimes we as the teachers will perform that activity as if we were students because it really does make the process more valid when you can you know, see, see how it goes. And, you know, then we, afterwards we're done, we sit and we talk about it and make some feedback and good things and bad things. And, and what happens from it is, is we, all of us get ideas as to what we can do in our own classrooms. I can kind of see what my other biology colleagues are doing and then I see how being the first to teach them at the high school how we can link it to the science classes that they would take after my biology class like the chemistries and the physics classes that they would have and how there's continuity and common themes. I think it's been an entire cultural shift for oh, absolutely. us that, that we've gotten away from content, we've been focusing on practices, we've been um, getting in each other's classrooms, getting in the middle of what other people are doing and seeing how we're either getting better, not getting better, seeing the challenges that we have because it's, it's all about making our kids better, right? Yeah, and I think it's kind of our culture has changed. We were just talking the fact that we've been working on this for about eight years. And over the past eight years, the fundamental cultural shift that we've experienced has really kind of defined itself. We're a lot more willing to say something without somebody judging you. Or, you can't do it that way, that's just wrong. It's, um, if you say something and somebody says, well, I do it this way instead, we're a lot more open to that. It's really taken a long time to get there. Well, I don't know about you, but I think when people say it worked really great, there's nothing to talk about there. I think the discussions have come out of what doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and because it's science, and we're trying to look at evidence and argue from evidence, 
it doesn't matter, I think, most of the time what the result is. It's what's happened in the process, and it's that discussion that's had the value. Because everything that we've done, there's nothing evaluative about it. It's, it's just you want to be here, you have a curiosity about what's happening, and this didn't work for me. Could you help me? And then that leads to lots of support, lots of comfort, lack of judgment, all that kind of stuff. That, that volunteering of, oh, well, when I did the lab, I did it this way. And that's either helpful or it's not. You can take it or you can leave it. But the, the contribution has really increased as to, have you ever thought about doing it this way? That, that's a lot more prevalent now than it ever was. All of us get ideas as to what we can do in our own classrooms. Um, sometimes we just we take the idea directly uh, that we saw, and sometimes we modify it to make it fit. And sometimes it just inspires us to do something completely different, but it's that spirit of collaboration and best practice sharing that has really enhanced all of our teaching. Anybody who wants to do this, they need to recognize that it doesn't happen in a year, that the reason we've been successful is it's coming from the bottom up. It is not coming from someone sitting, it's not even like the, the beauty of the professional development was not that they, they, they put it out there and then we picked it up and fit it to us. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have this, this thing that's, that we have made. And we have you know, a department chairman and a department structure and, a, and an administration that allows us to be this. And we all have enough talent that we're all learning from each other and we're getting better. And because science never ends, we don't end. I mean, that's the exciting thing. Science is never over, right? So we always have these new questions. And I think really a, a, there's been a big shift in the department where Absolutely. we have changed the way that we do things. And there's a lot more. There was a phrase that we had to use a lot at uh, MISE. It was uh, presuming positive intentions. And I think going into these uh, third Tuesday meetings and whatnot. We're always presuming that what is being presented uh, can be useful to some. And we always need to take criticism and question and presume that there's positive intent about what anybody is saying. They really started to share at this level that was very different than sharing before. Because there's always been informal sharing. It's been that kind of department. But with Tuesdays actually modeling the lesson and the other teachers being the students in the class and doing it, just showing that. No one said this is what you should do, but here's what I do. What do you think? And many times the teachers would give them suggestions as to how to make it better or how they could adapt it to their classroom. So that idea of watching other people teach and being secure enough to teach in front of your peers, which is such a difficult thing to do, has really changed the culture in the science department.